welcome to chapter 13.6 now this section is about stokes theorem now before we discuss the stokes theorem let's recall the green's theorem that we learned in chapter 13.4 now let's say we have a closed curve on the xy plane closed curve c on the xy plane and this domain d is is the region bounded by this closed curve c and if we have a vector field in r2 let's say with components p and q then basically green's theorem told us to evaluate this line integral using the area integral so basically line integral over the closed curve of f dot ds so this is an arc length element this is little s so this line integral equals to this uh, area integral now it is not difficult to show that this quantity equals to curl of f dot k so if you think about this vector field f equals to p comma q comma zero then you can calculate its curl of f and if you take the dot product between this curl of f and the unit normal that points in the positive c direction that's vector k this vector k is nothing but zero comma zero comma one then you will get you will get the quantity inside this double integral now the stokes theorem is a generalized version of this green's theorem so basically stokes theorem stokes theorem oh, oh, stokes theorem is a generalization of this result to a surface in, sp in space initially our we had a domain on the xy plane but now we have a surface in r3 so surface in space and its boundary let's state the theorem so here we have the stokes theorem let's draw a figure so we have x y and c coordinate axis We have a surface S. Let's say we have a surface like this. So that's our surface S. This is the boundary of the surface. Uh, I will use a different color to denote the boundary. It's the boundary of the surface. This is the bound and uh, this is the surface S. And black curve denotes the the boundary of the surface. Okay, now on this the boundary of the surface can be written using C, that's a curve. And let's see the surface is S. see is the boundary okay 
now if you project this surface onto the xy plane you will see a domain d you will see a domain d domain D on the XY plane okay so let's state the theorem we have a oriented surface okay so let S be an oriented surface so basically S is a surface with two surfaces that is bounded that is bounded by a simple closed curve and let let's say we have a unit normal field n n be the outward point in You need normal vector field. You need normal vector field. Uh, let's say if f equals to a three dimensional vector field with components p, q, and r. we have a vector field f on s then stokes theorem says the line integral over the boundary of s which is c so f dot ds little s this equals to double integral of curl of f dot ds so that's a this is a vector vector area element ds over the surface s now from the previous section we know that this surface integral can be written in the following form we have curl of f dot need, you need normal vector n times the surface area element ds so this is the stokes theorem now again if we want to evaluate a line integral over a closed curve of the boundary of a surface then what you could do is you could ev evaluate instead of evaluating this line integral you could evaluate this flux integral now in the previous section we learned to calculate a flux integral and now your vector field so this curl of f will be a vector field we know how to calculate the curl of a vector field it's gradient cross f and then we have to take the dot product between curl of f and the unit normal vector and if you want we can further simplify this uh, flux integral now we can define this flux integral over the domain d so you will get curl of f dot this should be minus f sub x minus f sub y and 1 dA and we know how to derive this formula from the previous section basically this n dS can be simplified to the vector minus f sub x 
comma minus f sub y comma 1 dA over the domain D. So using this um, we can calculate a line integral over a boundary of a surface. Um, and sometimes we can write this line integral, this left hand side can be represented using this notation. Uh, some authors use, so let's make a note. This line integral f dot ds curve c is the same as the differential form of p dx plus q dy plus r dc. And we use this differential notation in chapter 13.2 to represent a line integral.